Have you ever considered the journey your $1 banana took to reach your local grocery store? Or how your favorite chocolate bar may have been connected to child labor or deforestation in West Africa? Or how quinoa's growing popularity in the West has transformed the lives of Bolivian farmers? Or how McDonald's spread to nearly every corner of the globe, and what that says about cultural homogenization and the loss of culinary diversity? Our contemporary food system is incredibly globalized and interconnected. And so in this video, we're going to explore the globalization of food and agriculture. There's a lot to unpack, so let's get to it. But let's start with finding out exactly how globalized our food system is today. There's a couple of ways we can think about that question. According to data from the World Trade Organization, global agricultural exports, excluding fish, increased from about $300 billion in the year 2000 to nearly $1.5 trillion in 2022. Over the same time period, we see sharp increases for nearly every category of agricultural trade. Global exports of sugar, cotton, beverages, and tobacco, and miscellaneous agricultural products all increased more than 200%. Trade in animal and dairy products increased by about 275%. Trade in coffee, tea, fruits and vegetables, and cereals increased more than 300%. And trade in oil seeds, fats, and oils increased by a whopping 557%. In terms of the total volume of agricultural production, China is the world's single largest producer, producing nearly 1.7 billion metric tons of food in 2021. It is the world's top producer of rice, but it also has a considerable production of corn, wheat, fruits and vegetables, tea, cotton, chicken, and pork. But the country's sizable domestic demand means that it imports far more than it exports. Indeed, in 2021, China was the world's largest food importer, importing more than $140 billion worth of agricultural products that year. The United States is the world's second largest agricultural producer by volume and the world's largest agricultural exporter by value. In 2021, the U.S. produced more than 600 million metric tons of food and exported about $177 billion in agricultural commodities, primarily in the form of grains, especially corn and wheat, soybeans, meat and animal products, and various specialty crops. Brazil is the world's third largest agricultural producer by volume, producing more than 500 million metric tons in 2021. It's also the world's third largest exporter by value behind the United States and the Netherlands, exporting more than $100 billion in soybeans, sugar, coffee, beef, and poultry in 2021. Other major food producers by volume include India, Russia, France, Mexico, and Japan. This gives us a sense of the scale of global agricultural production today. And while we've traced the historical development of this trend from the Colombian exchange through the spice trade and colonization in another video, the contemporary era of globalization in food and agriculture is something that's qualitatively distinct. Understanding the interconnectedness of global food systems helps us come to term with its implications, both positive and negative, for food security, the economy, culture, and the environment. And so in the rest of this video, we're going to explore the major forces driving the globalization of food and agriculture today and consider some of the major implications of this trend. We can identify four broad forces or factors that are driving the globalization of the modern food system, the first of which are political in nature. Here, governments have developed multilateral agreements like the World Trade Organization, regional trade blocks like the North American Free Trade Agreement or the European Union, and countless bilateral treaties and agreements with the goal of reducing barriers and liberalizing international trade, facilitating the cross-border flow of agricultural products, and creating a more globalized market. They've also worked to harmonize food safety, quality, and environmental standards across countries, facilitating trade by establishing common frameworks for regulatory compliance. And individual governments have often used subsidies, export promotion measures, and import restrictions to influence agricultural trade patterns, often with unintended consequences for both domestic and international markets. Economic forces have also fueled the globalization of food and agriculture. Rising global demand for diverse food products, driven by growing populations and increasing incomes, stimulates agricultural trade. Emerging markets, particularly in Asia and Africa, are significant drivers of this demand. Indeed, one of the most often cited examples of this is the sharp increase for demand in meat that often accompanies economic development. 
For example, per capita meat consumption in China increased from about 4 kilograms per person in the year 1960 to nearly 70 kilograms per person in 2021. At the same time, the type of meats consumed have shifted as the country has grown wealthier, with beef and pork often displacing chicken and fish. Changing consumer demand and dietary preferences in emerging markets have created new opportunities for agricultural exporters and shaped the types of food products traded globally. The development of complex supply chains allows for the efficient movement of agricultural products from areas of surplus to areas of deficit. Companies optimize production and distribution to minimize costs and maximize reach. Foreign direct investment in agricultural production, processing, and distribution facilities have further intensified the integration of global food supply chains. Investments by multinational corporations in agricultural sectors of developing countries brings capital, technology, and expertise, boosting local production capabilities and integrating them into global markets. But it also generates concerns over the environmental and ethical implications of such trade. Culturally, the previously mentioned changes in dietary patterns like increased meat and dairy consumption in developing countries and the broader westernization of global diets, most notably through the spread of western-style fast food chains and processed foods, have shaped consumer tastes and eating habits worldwide, contributing to a homogenization of food cultures. The global reach of media and advertising has amplified this trend, promoting international food brands and products, influencing consumer choices, and creating a global market for certain foods. The promotion of Western food culture through advertising and media in particular has fueled the demand for imported food products in many countries. And more broadly, the exchange of culinary practices and preferences has led people around the world to develop a taste for international cuisines, increasing demand for diverse food products, and promoting global trade. Just think about how the availability of cuisines from around the world has exploded over the past 20 or 30 years. Finally, technological forces have also shaped the globalization of food and agriculture in recent decades. Innovations in transportation and logistics, including refrigerated shipping and air freight, enabled the rapid and efficient movement of perishable goods across long distances, supporting global trade in fresh produce, meat, dairy, and other items. Technological advancements in agriculture, ranging from crop breeding and biotechnology to precision farming and advanced irrigation systems, have increased the productivity and efficiency of farms, contributing to the availability of food for global markets and the use of information and communications technologies in agriculture, including satellite imaging, data analytics, and blockchain for supply chain transparency, and countless other examples, have all revolutionized the way food is marketed and sold, connecting producers and consumers across ever-increasing distances. We can see all of this play out in just about any meal at any fast food restaurant around the world. Indeed, a fast food meal is a fascinating microcosm of the globalized food system, illustrating the complex interconnectedness of food production, processing, and consumption across borders. Just think about it. Where do the ingredients for your meal come from? The beef in a hamburger might come from cattle raised in the United States, fed with grains sourced from Brazil or Argentina. The chicken in your nuggets could be made from poultry raised in Thailand or China. The bun might be grown from wheat in Canada or Ukraine, milled into flour in one location, and then baked in another. Your french fries could be made from potatoes grown in Idaho, processed and frozen in the Netherlands, and then shipped worldwide. And the cooking oil used to fry the food might be derived from soybeans grown in the United States or palm oil from Southeast Asia. Further, the ingredients often undergo extensive processing in multiple countries before reaching the restaurant. For example, beef might be slaughtered and processed in one country, frozen and shipped to another for further processing, and then distributed to restaurants globally. Packaging materials like paper cups and plastic wrappers are often sourced from different parts of the world. All of this relies on a vast network of transportation and logistics to move ingredients, processed foods, and finished products across continents. This involves ships, trains, trucks, and airplanes, all contributing to the carbon footprint of the meal. Meanwhile, fast food companies invest heavily in marketing and branding to create a consistent global image and appeal to diverse consumers. The logos, slogans, and menu items are often standardized across countries, promoting a uniform experience. Indeed, the marketing of this experience has contributed to the global popularity of fast food, facilitating the homogenization of diets worldwide as similar meals become readily available in diverse cultural contexts.
Finally, let's conclude by considering some of the implications of our globalized food system, both positives and negatives, as well as some of the unresolved questions surrounding the issue. On the positive side, a more globalized food system increases the availability and variety of food we consume. Globalization has dramatically expanded our food horizons, bringing new flavors, ingredients, and tastes into our lives. It permits the consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables year-round, regardless of local growing seasons and its improved dietary diversity and nutrition in many regions of the world. At the same time, efficient global supply chains and economies of scale have generally resulted in lower food prices for consumers. While this can vary dramatically around the world, today the average American spends less than 10% of their disposable income on food, half the amount they spent in the 1960s. And, at least in theory, a globalized food system could help ensure food security, maintaining balanced food supplies, and ensuring that countries with surplus production can support those with deficits, potentially reducing the risk of food shortages. In practice, though, this has been difficult to achieve. But on the negative side, our globalized food system raises concerns over its environmental impact. Intensive agriculture and long-distance transportation contributes to the depletion of natural resources, such as water and soil, and increases greenhouse gas emissions. Indeed, the global food system is a significant contributor to climate change through deforestation, methane emissions from livestock, and carbon emissions from transportation. Further, monoculture farming and habitat destruction for agricultural expansion threaten biodiversity and ecosystem health, and ensuring sustainable practices across global supply chains can be challenging due in part to varying regulations, enforcement capabilities, and economic priorities in different countries. The increasing length of global supply chains also raises a variety of health and safety concerns. Long and complex supply chains can increase the risk of food contamination and make it more challenging to trace and address food safety issues when they arise. The increased consumption of processed and fast foods, which are often high in fats, sugars, and salts, contributes to rising rates of obesity and diet-related diseases around the world. Finally, the globalized food system is dominated by a small number of incredibly powerful multinational corporations, potentially marginalizing small producers and even small countries, and leading to unequal power dynamics. In such a globalized food system, small farmers, especially in developing countries, are dependent on volatile global markets, which can lead to economic instability and vulnerability, all as the dominance of global food chains erodes local food cultures and traditional agricultural practices, leading to a loss of culinary heritage. But that's it for now. Please leave any questions you have in the comments section below, and as always, thanks for watching.